I measured my biological age. My do not in pace value score, which measures the speed of your biological aging is 0.62, which means that for every year I age only 0.62 of it. At the Rejuvenation Olympics website where people show their results with the do not in pace score, then the lowest score on that website is 0.67. Nice. In this video, I'm going to share with my other results with these tests, and I'm also going to share with my routine in terms of my dieting practices, my exercise routine, my supplementation, etc. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. It's showtime. So here were my results for my age group. So the do not in pace is based on the DNA methylation clock and it uses the algorithms and the patterns of DNA methylation based on the Dunedin study, which is one of the longest like human um, intervention studies for longevity and uh, age reversal or age assessment. Here, my chronological age is 28. I'm almost 29, actually, in a few months. Dunedin pace value is uh, 0.62, which uh, even for my age group is significantly lower than uh, is uh, on average based on the oldest DNA methylation clocks. They're based on your age population, so your age group. They're not measuring all of it. Like your results are always compared to your age group. What is normal for your average age and uh, then based on that it will tell you how good are you doing compared to your own age group. So that's why the kind of uh, argument that, you know, I'm so young, I'm only 29 years old that that's why I'm aging very slowly. <laughs> that's, you know, of course, there is some aspect of truth to that. But even if you compare all the other people in my age group, which is the 29 and 28 year olds, even then I'm doing significantly better than the average 28 year olds. Even then I'm in the 99 percentile of people in my chronological age. So I'm not like just getting these results because I'm young. I'm getting these results because I'm also practicing what I preach and I have a specific like routine that I've been following for, you know, six, eight years almost. Uh, and uh, that's why I'm getting these kinds of results. The average person who is 28 years old, then as you can see there, doing an pace score is going to be above 0 0.8. So the average 28 year old has the do not in pace score of around like 0 0.85 or something like that whereas mine is 0 0.62. And we can also add in some other people who have done the test as well online. I've found a few videos who have done the same test. So this YouTube channel, Jesse James West, has a lot of uh, followers. He did the same test with Brian Johnson. He followed his routine, etc., and he shared his results. Point seven nine. <laughs> So Jesse James West got the result of 0 0.79 and he's actually younger than me. <laughs> I think uh, Jesse James West is like 24 or 25 years old. So he's like four years younger than me and he got the result of 0 0.79, which uh, puts him somewhere around here. So as you can see, he's doing significantly worse based on this test. And I mean, he's not an unhealthy person. Like he's very lean. He's very fit. He uh, follows a clean diet relatively. He, uh, you know, exercises regularly, lifts weights, gets a lot of sunlight. He sleeps quite well. So he's pretty much following the very healthy lifestyle. He's healthier than 99% of people of his age already. And uh, still he's uh, doing it in pace score wasn't, you know, as good as mine uh, because I do some other things. I do different things. I don't follow the kind of regular advice in terms of health and longevity. I have my own, you know, trick tricks and uh, tips up my sleeve that I'm going to share with you as well. We have another YouTube channel, Leon Hendricks, who is, uh, I think he's 27 years old and he also got his results. His results said that his uh, speed of aging is 0 0.92. So he's 27 years old, and as you can see, he uh, the speed of his aging is uh, a lot faster than the average of someone his age. And uh, he's also relatively healthy and fit person. He eats a pretty good diet. He uh, exercises regularly, and uh, you know he's doing everything right in terms of uh, most of the effort that he's put into. So you might wonder, why have I gotten such good results? Why is my speed of aging only 0.6? 62 compared to Jesse James West's, who is younger than me, whose uh, speed of aging should be lower than me based on the chronological age, but because he follows a different lifestyle and he's still a very healthy person, he's still healthier than 99% of people in the world, his speed of aging is still 0 0.79 and the other, uh, Leon Hendricks, had a speed of aging of 0 0.92. So it's not just that you're young and you follow a healthy lifestyle, you get these results. You need to put into some extra effort and you need to have some additional, you know, specific 
protocols designed for reversing and slowing down the biological aging that I'm going to share with you in this video. I also don't have any good longevity genetics. I actually have quite bad longevity genetics based on my family history. So no one in my family is older than 80 years old. My first grandfather died when he was actually 36. He died to uh, colorectal cancer. My second grandfather died when he was 74. My grandmothers are both alive still, but they're in their 70s. But no one else in my family, in my close family, in my distant family has ever lived above 80 years old. So I don't have any exceptional longevity genetics in my family. And I intend to change that. I intend to break my own family record as well and live until 100 years old. So what is the biggest reason why my aging speed is so low and what is giving me the biggest results? So first I'll cover the 80-20. What are the most fundamental, most impactful and most effective things in my routine that give me 80% of the results? Because yes, you could follow a whole lot of things, but most of those things uh, don't give you the biggest majority of results. There is only like 20% of the activities that give you the 80% of the results. That's like the Pareto's rule that applies to many things, your biology, your physiology, as well as business and uh, other economics, all those things follow the Pareto's principle in most cases. The number one most important thing for slowing down biological aging as well as improving your oral health is calorie restriction. So calorie restriction is just something that describes the idea of eating less calories than you burn. And in all species, calorie restriction has been shown to slow down the speed of aging and increase lifespan. What calorie restriction basically means is that I just eat either like around my maintenance calories, I don't get overweight, I don't gain extra body fat, I maintain a relatively stable body weight all the time and uh, eat a bit less calories than I usually burn. There's really no magic to this when you are in a calorie restricted state, then your body will ramp up a lot of its longevity pathways, such as AMPK, it increases autophagy, it activates sirtuins, it suppresses mTOR, the growth pathway, and it also helps to clear out many of the debris and junk material that accumulates inside cells. As a result of that, if your body experiences mild positive stress like hormesis through calorie restriction, then you're going to age slower because your immune system is stronger, you turn on the body's antioxidant defense system, you turn on the other longevity pathways, and you also avoid the uh, chronic diseases. Because if you are overeating calories, then your risk of obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and just other kind of chronic diseases increase exponentially. So calorie restriction is the most effective way to make sure you don't develop any of these chronic diseases and maintain a good body composition that does also slow down biological aging. Now, what kind of a diet do I follow to adhere to that calorie restriction? I generally follow a whole foods based diet but I still follow the 80-20 rule here as well. You don't need a 100% perfect diet to slow down aging. Many of the centenarians who live past 100, they don't have a perfect diet. Some of them smoke, some of them drink wine, some of them eat ice cream. So uh, they do generally eat healthy foods, but it's not 100% perfect. You never need 100% perfect because there even is no such thing as 100% perfect diet. You just need to get 80% of it right. You need to eat whole foods that uh, have less of these uh, added ingredients that are minimally processed and generally are lower in calories. Most of my foods are going to be like different kinds of vegetables, leafy greens, some uh, fish, eggs, different kinds of tubers, fruits, a little bit of meats. I eat mushrooms and maybe like a little bit of nuts and seeds, but uh, not a lot. When it comes to the biological age specifically and the DNA methylation age, then there is a specific group of foods that you need to focus on to support the methylation process. So methylation is the process of adding methyl donors and shuffling them around. DNA methylation describes attaching the methyl donors to your DNA that then have epigenetic effects on your longevity and the speed of your aging. If you're not getting enough methyl donors into your diet or you'll have like some aspects of uh, methylation mutations like the MTHFR mutations or something like that then and you're not getting enough of the methyl donors into your diet then you will be aging faster and your risk of different kinds of diseases also increases because you're hypomethylating you're not providing your body enough of the methyl donors needed to support methylation and DNA methylation the main methyl donors that you want to focus on are trimethylglycine or TMG also known as betaine you can get that from uh, different kinds of uh, whole foods like uh, beetroot, shrimps, spinach, wheat germ, wheat bran, mushrooms, and different kinds of vegetables. Some other methyl donors that you want to get are B vitamins, especially B12, and uh, you get that mostly from animal protein sources. Lastly, you also want to get some choline that supports methylation, but it's also important for uh, Alzheimer's and neurodegeneration, as well as maintaining good liver health. So the best dietary sources of choline are egg yolks and uh, liver. 
Another key component that I think contributes a lot to my slower speed of aging is I don't drink any alcohol. So I've been pretty much uh, completely free of alcohol for the last eight years or something. I might have like one to two drinks per year, uh, usually on some uh, special occasions. Like I drank a little bit of wine at my wedding. Uh, we drank some wine at our honeymoon with my with, with, with my wife. Now, do you need to be completely zero alcohol to slow down aging? No, because the you know red wine has also been uh, a big part of the Mediterranean diet, and uh, a lot of the centenarians also drink a little bit of wine here and there. They're not alcoholics, of course, but uh, you know you can probably get away with one to two drinks per week, maybe three at most you will not really get away with if you drink every night. If you drink one glass of wine every night, then that's probably already too much because it's going to negatively affect the methylation and it's going to negatively affect the speed of aging as well. So alcohol is even worse than sugar. Alcohol is much worse than any other processed food, in my opinion. And you, at, at least in doses, that is beyond one drink per day. And I do think that that is also part of the reason why my biological aging speed is quite is so low is because i don't really i i never drink that's a big component to this disappointed the next dietary component that gives me a lot of results at least based on my opinion and based on my research is intermittent fasting also known as time restricted eating i personally still believe that a lot of my results for my health as well as my speed of biological aging is due to the smaller time restricted eating window. So I currently eat one and a half meals per day. So I have one larger meal for dinner and during the daytime I have a smaller meal that consists of primarily only protein. Do you need to be eating like one meal a day to get the same result? Probably not. Two meals a day I think is going to be identical to one meal a day and actually one meal a day, just a single one meal a day is probably counterproductive because of the increased stress and uh, because of eating just too many calories in one sitting, you might have some negative effects on your blood work uh, and uh, you know your speed of biological aging isn't going to be that optimal. Like two meals I think is the most optimal eating frequency for the lowest speed of uh, biological aging. Now if you're someone who is in their 50s or 60s and 70s, then probably three meals is the recommended amount because at that point you want to shift your focus more on maintaining some of the muscle tissue as to not become frail and as to not become uh, skinny fat or as to not become uh, sarcopenic, which is very important at that age. But for my age, then I can easily get away with that uh, eating window and because the fasting window mimics a lot of the effects of calorie restriction, my body for the vast majority of the day is in a state of calorie restriction and energy deprivation, which is a huge signal for turning on these longevity pathways. Like I've been doing intermittent fasting for 10 years and it has always worked. I have changed my diet. I've been on a, like a more heavier meat-based diet. I've been on a more, more plant-based diet, but the intermittent fasting window has always stayed the same and it has always... I think it has always been the cornerstone to my results in terms of the speed of aging and just overall health. And I think that the macros itself, like whether low carb or high carb, high fat, low fat, those are actually not that important for at least the speed of biological aging. You can have a very beneficial result with a low carb diet and you can get a very beneficial result with a low fat diet and a high carb diet. As long as you don't develop metabolic syndrome, as, as long as you don't become overweight and as long as you don't get diabetes, you will be able to slow down the speed of aging on any diet. But uh, the intermittent fasting I think is still something that is uh, recommended for me at least to add to any diet and it does have positive effects on the DNA methylation as well as the reduction in the speed of biological aging. Now let's talk about exercise. Exercise is a huge cornerstone to my longevity routine and just my health. In general I exercise very regularly and I rarely like skip exercise. Like uh, I've been uh, exercising regularly for the last 10 years and uh, the longest time I've gone without exercising is probably like a week. On a regular basis I'll be getting at least four to five workouts per week. You want to train both resistance training as well as cardio because both muscle mass and your cardiorespiratory fitness are associated with longevity and both of them will uh, slow down the speed of aging. If I were to just say which type of exercise is superior for just the speed of biological aging, then I would say cardio is probably a more effective way to slow down the speed of aging, in the, at least in the short term. 
because what cardio does, it uh, provides a bigger energy stressor to your system and it also turns on the longevity pathways a lot more than uh, resistance training. But you still want to do resistance training as well because resistance training is going to transform your body a lot more than just cardio. If you just do cardio, then you're not really going to see a significant change in your body composition in terms of your muscle mass and your fat percentage. On an average week, I train like three times a week with resistance training and uh, my focus is only on like strength based movements I do like a more traditional powerlifting split right now I don't want to build muscle tissue like I'm already at the peak of my like natural muscle building potential I, I don't really need to add any more muscle tissue the only focus for me right now is the muscle strength and maintaining that and increasing my bone density over the long term with the resistance training for cardio I do cardio as well at least you know two to three times per week and I cycle between different methods of doing cardio I'll do like some actual low intensity steady state cardio for like 30 to 45 or even 60 minutes on some days and I also do some intervals and some sprints so like I do like a sprint workout every every now and then and I'll do like a high intensity interval workout as well once a week because both of them are important for increasing your vo2 max and both of them have slightly different metabolic effects that are going to improve your DNA methylation scores and are going to improve your speed of biological aging as well. One crucial part that many people who are into longevity and anti-aging is that doing too much, like if you are just exercising and going hard all the time, then chances are you're going to overdo it eventually. If you're overtraining, then that is going to also actually accelerate your biological aging. So you don't want to overtrain. If you want to become a power, like a professional athlete, then you have to overtrain to a certain point and you have to sacrifice your health and longevity to a certain point as well. So that's why like professional, at the pro professional level, you have to sacrifice some aspects of your aging speed. And that's why you don't want to like, if you're a recreational athlete or a everyday person, then you don't want to reach over training. You want to overreach in terms of pushing your body beyond its current limits, but you don't really uh, benefit from becoming overtrained and uh, you know chronically overtrained all the time. You want to like yeah train regularly. You want to train hard. You want to put in the effort of trying to improve your results at the gym, but uh, you don't want to become overtrained. So recovery is as important for the reduction in biological aging speed as the exercise and as the, any other stressor. So you want to make sure that you sleep enough. I sleep at least seven to eight hours every night. And uh, that for my age, for me right now, gives me adequate results. So as an adult, you want to get at least like seven to eight hours for the optimal biological age reduction. It's probably better to aim for eight hours, eight and a half hours is I think gonna be the sweet spot. But the quality of your sleep matters a lot more than the quantity. So uh, how well do you sleep? How much deep sleep are you getting? How much REM sleep are you getting? Those things matter a lot more than the total amount of uh, your sleep. Most important thing for that is maintaining a consistent sleep wakefulness cycle and circadian rhythm so if you are going to bed and waking up at the same time every day then uh, that increases the chance of you getting better sleep and it also trains your body to sleep better if you go into bed at different times of the day all the time and at irregular times then uh, it's going to mess up your body circadian clocks and it's also going to make it harder for you to actually fall asleep. NAD recycling is linked to the circadian rhythms. Your different longevity pathways like autophagy, AMPK, sirtuins, they're all linked to the circadian rhythms and you want to maintain the circadian rhythm. It's kind of as important as exercise in my opinion. Go to bed at the same time and wake up around the same time and be more like a diurnal creature. Morning sunlight exposure, daylight sunlight exposure as well are very important for me maintaining circadian rhythm alignment and exposure to morning sunlight helps you to produce melatonin at night it helps you to sleep better at night it boosts your mood it increases energy recycling so avoiding sunlight is not the smartest thing for longevity you do want to get exposed to healthy amounts of uh, sunlight especially morning sunlight and the sunset so there is a specific wavelength of light that you get from the morning sunrise and the evening sunset of course if you are getting sunburned then that's bad for the skin aging you're gonna get more wrinkles and yes if you are this kind of a person who just spends a lot of time outside then you you, you will be like in better health you will have better mood <laughs> and stuff like that. But uh, it is true that uh, too much sun exposure does age your skin. So it makes you look older. You're going to get more wrinkles. Now, I'm personally not really that worried about that. I don't really care about wrinkles 
like we're all gonna get wrinkles eventually. I'm not going to neurotically obsess about never getting wrinkles. Like it's natural. Like if you don't want to get wrinkles, then you also have to stop laughing <laughs> because you know the laugh laughing itself uh, creates wrinkles. And if you are a person who laughs a lot, which is good for your health and immune system then uh, you will get more wrinkles, especially around the eyes and the forehead, because you're, if you're laughing, then you, you, know, you move your uh, skin around. Whereas if you don't want to get any skin wrinkles at all, then you have to inject Botox and have to never laugh at all and never get exposed to sunlight, which uh, does reduce the aesthetic speed, reduces the speed of your skin aging in an aesthetic sense, but it doesn't really have a different effect on your biological aging speed. So I'm more interested about just living longer than uh, looking younger. I don't care if I look older. Um, it's going to happen anyway. Like once you're in your 40s or 50s, you're going to get wrinkles anyway. So you don't really have to like, you know, worry about it uh, that much in my opinion. And that, uh, and it's not uh, worthwhile to like completely avoid sunlight uh, for that sake. Like you're going to get wrinkles anyway. You're going to just sacrifice the other health benefits that you will get from the uh, sunlight. Of course, you have to be smart about it. Don't get sunburned. The healthiest sun exposure is in the morning and in the evening, and the worst sun exposure at, is at uh, noon at midday. So you know you can like avoid sunlight at the daytime and at uh, like the noon time around 12 and uh, 2 p.m. That's where the sun is the hottest and the highest UV index. But you don't want to avoid sunlight in the morning and in the evening. That's a very important part. Feel how soft my skin is. Now, what about my supplements? What kind of supplements am I taking? I have made a full, very long video going through my current supplementation routine. I'm not going to go through it right now. You can check out the video. But uh, my supplement routine isn't that complex. I'm not taking any rapamycin. I'm not taking any metformin. Uh, I do take some senolytics every once in a while, but not uh, like every day or anything like that. I take maybe like NMN every once in a while, not every day either. Some of the supplements that I take every day are like uh, collagen peptides, uh, glycine, and some creatine, NAC quite regularly, and a few other like, uh, you know, vitamins and minerals. But yeah, my supplement routine is pretty low maintenance and, and it's still very effective. Like the supplements have the least effect on your biological aging speed. The biggest effect from your biological aging speed comes from the diet, maintaining good body composition, being lean, eating a bit less calories, exercising regularly, and making sure that you get enough of the methyl donors. And maybe like intermittent fasting is still more powerful than any other supplement in my opinion. So yeah, the supplements, may will, may, they will add maybe like five to 10% to your results, but they're not going to be the vast majority. And many people just hyper-focus on the supplements. I think the supplements can be, yeah, powerful, but they're not something that you want to, you know, worry about that much. And uh, your main focus should still be getting fit, get as fit as possible as you can, get as strong as possible as you can, get as lean as possible as you can, get as good of a VO2 max as you can, and you will be far better off than focusing on the supplements. That's just my advice. Now, this is the last segment of the video. I'm going to cover some questions. Well, those people are decades older than you are. Not a really a fair comparison. Of course, you age slower than they do. That is a valid point. To a certain extent only because your body actually ages the fastest during puberty now we don't call it aging we call it puberty but when you look at it then your body goes through the most amount of epigenetic and biological changes in your puberty like you're a very completely different person when you were 11 years old compared to 18 or 20 years old. So you go through actually the most morphological and biological changes during puberty. So, uh, and you actually reach the full physical development around 25 years of old. And that applies to psychological development as well, coincidentally. Like uh, your brain is actually very plastic up until the point of 25 years old. And I do find that the DNA methylation speed is much higher in your puberty up until 25 years of age and after that it stabilizes you become an adult around 25 years old actually and uh, you maintain that adulthood you know usually in your 40s and 50s you start to see some accelerated aging but uh, even then you know the result my biological age results they're not compared to the 50 or 70 year old. They're compared to my age group and they give you the result based on that. So it always compares my results 
to the individuals in my age group. And even that in that analysis, I'm already better than 99% of other people in my age group. And like we shared in the beginning of the video, Jesse James West, he's healthy, he's fit and lean, he eats clean, he exercises regularly, and uh, he still got a worse result despite being four years younger than me. And the other person as well, who is also exercising regularly, he's lean, he's uh, healthy, he eats a good diet, his results was also 0.92 compared to my 0.62 and we are around the same age. He's still younger than me. Uh, so it's, you know, yes, I do have a certain advantage in some ways, but uh, if that were the case, then anyone who is 25 years old would get the same result as me, but they're not. Jesse James West, who is 24, I think he got a worse result than me and he's already doing better than 90% of other people. So if you take a random 25 year old off the street and you measure their biological age and you do the DNA methylation test, then they're probably gonna get a much worse result than me. They're gonna be probably around 0 0.8, 0 0.9, like the other average people. So, uh, you know, yes, I have a certain advantage over some people. I have a huge advantage over people who don't follow any healthy lifestyle. I have less of an advantage over people who follow a healthy lifestyle and they're in their 40s, but someone who is in their 40s and 50s, but they follow the healthy lifestyle, then their speed of aging is going to be lower than the 25 year old who doesn't follow a very routine, uh, very like healthy lifestyle. So the age can only get you so far. If you're 25 and you don't, so you, you can't expect to get a very slow speed of aging just because of being young. It doesn't work like that. You also need to put in the work. I've been putting in the work for eight years, 10 years, and I've been following this same routine for, yeah, a decade. And that's why I have such good results. And I also like shared in the video, I have a few ticks, tips and uh, tricks that is beyond just a healthy lifestyle. So I'm putting in more work than the average healthy person. And I've been doing it for much longer. And my age does contribute to it a little bit, but my speed of aging has been actually faster over the last eight years than my speed of aging will be in the next 10 years, if that makes sense. I have been aging much faster between the ages of 18 to 25 than I will be aging between the ages of 28 to 35. From now on until 35 years of age, my speed of aging will be slower than my speed of aging was when I was 18 years old because of the nature of the human body. When you're a teenager, you are aging much faster than someone in their 30s. That's just how it works. It's not called aging, it's called puberty, <laughs> and it's called becoming an adult, but that's true. Like your DNA methylation age and your epigenetic age is much faster between the years of 18 to 25 than it is between 28 to 35. So I'm actually just entering my golden years in terms of my speed of biological aging. From now on, from the age of 28 to 35, I'm expecting my speed of aging to reduce even more or at least stabilize until I get 35 years old or 45 years old. And because I'm following already these healthy lifestyle habits and because I'm staying consistent to my routine for the next 10 to 20 years, then uh, I'm expecting my speed of aging to, yeah, slow down even more and to maintain for a lot longer. So I, I don't think it's impossible for me to maintain this speed of aging, this 0 0.62 per year up until I'm 50 years old. Of course, time will tell. We don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I might, you know, some, something bad might happening. I might get like cancer or something. Uh, so, uh, you know, who knows? But at least based on the plan, based on the trajectory, that's going to happen. And I hope you, it answers that question. Yes, I have a certain advantage, but the advantage is wisdom. <laughs> the biggest advantage I have is wisdom. I have the wisdom to have applied this right routine to my health and longevity. And it wasn't a coincidence. It's not that I just stumbled upon this routine accidentally. Like five years ago, there was no one talking about this anti-aging stuff. I did it my own. I did the research my own. I wrote a book about it my own. I did my own strategy, my own routine, and I've been following it for ever, ever since that. So my wisdom is my biggest advantage. It's not my age. My biggest advantage is my wisdom for having had the wisdom to apply these things early on. And that's the biggest advantage that I have of having had the, the right intuition about this and then making the right decisions. And the reason why I've had the, that wisdom is because I'm maybe like uh, mentally a bit more mature than my chronological age. Like mentally, psychologically, I'm maybe like 35 years old because 
I'm more self-aware probably than the average person and uh, I'm also more determined than the average person. I'm also more disciplined than the average person and I'm also more intuitive than the average person and I'm also more wise than the average person. I'm certainly a lot wiser than someone who is 18 years old or someone who is even 38 years old, if that makes sense. So yeah, my advantage is my wisdom <laughs> and I don't want to turn it into like a rant, but uh, yeah, I've, I've talked about it long enough already. <laughs> Next question, Seem does your family have sprinters and explosive athletes primarily? Uh, no, I have no family history of any athletes. Like none of my family members are athletes and they've never been athletes. <laughs> like no one, no one that I know of. I, and the same applies to like longevity genes. I don't have any good longevity genes in my family. Like I said, my first grandfather died when he was 36 to colorectal cancer. My second grandfather died at the age of 74. My grandmothers are in their 70s and uh, my mother's side grand grandmother has he has she has like a genetic predisposition to hypertension even my other grandmother doesn't have any predispositions apparently but yeah like no one in my family is older than 80 years old like literally no one and uh, none of my grandparents none of my great grandparents none of them have made past 80 and uh, yeah like I said I intend to kind of change that and the reason has to do you know, the, the only reason I will be able to change that is through epigenetics and uh, through like lifestyle change. Next question, do you think being so much younger than the vast majority of the people on the Rejuvenation Olympics leaderboards that are 40 plus gives you an advantage? Do you think younger people might have an advantage when it comes to the seeding for rate of aging reduction using current interventions? Uh, well, at least, you know, I already talked about it a lot, but I'll add this point, which is that it's much easier to see results and improvements if you start off at a worse baseline. So for example, if I would have been overweight, if I had like pre-diabetes or just being lazy and not following any healthy lifestyle habits, I would have reversed my age a lot by just implementing some of the basics like losing weight, exercising regularly, cleaning up my diet. I would have seen so much better results if I just implemented from a worse baseline. If you are unhealthy and you just implement some of the basics, you're going to see huge improvements in your results. You're going to see huge uh, re reversal uh, results because if you start off being overweight and being unhealthy you just flip the script with some easy changes and you're going to see like you could easily see like a 10-year reduction in your biological age if you just fix some of the loopholes for me i've been already doing this for 10 years and it's for me to see extra benefits for me to see additional benefits in my age reversal is exponentially harder. It's actually much harder for me to reverse my age than for Brian Johnson. Now, Brian Johnson wasn't like super overweight. He was just a tech bro who uh, was a bit like unhealthy. Um, he just was over, overly stressed. Probably he didn't take care of his health that much. So for him to see an age reversal of five years and uh, get the results, it's very easy for him because he starts off at a worse baseline. Whereas for me to reverse my biological age by five years at already peak health <laughs> i'm already like at like peak health it's very hard for me to squeeze out that last bit of extra juice from that it's virtually impossible for me to get like a 10 year extra age reversal and you know it's even impossible probably for me to go below 16 years based on this test like i, I don't i think like the 16 is probably the ceiling it's almost impossible for to go below that and uh yeah even then it's very hard for me to see any additional health benefits in my age reversal because I'm already at peak. I'm already at the near peak in a lot of ways. So uh, yeah, that, I hope that answers your question. The worst off you start from, then the easier it is for you to see results. If you're already at maxed out of the fundamentals, you're maxed out at your fitness, you're maxed out, uh, like, and when I say maxed out, then I mean like you're at 80%, 80 to 90% of the things that you need to do and the results, then it's very hard for you to see additional benefits. So if anything, then it's actually harder for me to reverse my age because I'm already at peak health before I even started this. Maybe if I would have done this test six years ago, I would have seen similar results, but six years ago, I wasn't as healthy as I am now, if that makes sense. It's just, you know, I've been consistently implementing this routine for a long time. And uh, yeah, I will go into more details of my specifics of the routine, of my diet, my exercise, my supplements, all those things in separate videos, but this is more like a meta video of the entire routine and structure. Next question, uh, what are you doing that they are not doing? What would uh, you guess puts you ahead of them? Muscle mass, do you think Brian could get better results by building more muscle? 
who would love to see a video on this subject. I don't think it's muscle mass. Like, I think muscle, if anything, then at a certain point, it's going to have a negative effect on your speed of aging and longevity. So I'm already, in my opinion, I'm like at my peak in terms of how much muscle is healthy. Like my body mass index is 26. And uh, ideally, at my most ideal weight, I would be like with a body mass index of 24, maybe. So I, uh, at my own ideal weight, I would need to lose like two kilograms. And right now, 82 kilograms, I'm 176 centimeters tall. So that's my BMI is around 26, something like that. And uh, I could use maybe to lose two kilograms, but that will also require me to lose muscle tissue. And uh, that's not my focus right now. I don't think it's the muscle mass. I think uh, the biggest reason why I have better results in a lot of ways is the intermittent fasting. I think that's a huge, huge thing for me. And uh, I always attribute a lot of my health results to the intermittent fasting. And uh, just because of uh, I have like an intuition about it a little bit. And, uh, you know, having tested different diets, the diet, the dietary changes have had little to no effect on the results that I've gotten. Like the, th the test I did three years ago, I was on a completely different diet than I was right now. So the intermittent fasting, I think, is the most critical part for my results. And if anything else, then the, the DNA methylation donors, the dietary methyl donors from your diet, they also have a pretty huge impact. And last question, uh, and you did it without hiring a team of doctors. Way to go, Seem. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, like I don't have any anyone else that I'm working with. Um, it's just me, my own research, my own implementation of the things, my own testing. And of course, I don't have as much data as Brian Johnson or anyone else. Uh, I haven't t measured like my eyesight age. I haven't measured my liver age, whatever. Of course, Brian Johnson has a lot more data, but his data is mostly N equals one. And, uh, you know, I have only my blood work, my fitness tests, my my DNA methylation scores, my do not pay scores and those kind of things. And uh, I might do worse on some of those things. I might have worse eyesight or whatever than anyone else. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a different kind of a measurement. But uh, what I meant to want to mention here is that you don't need to have a very expensive routine. Like my routine isn't expensive. I'm spending only, the only thing I'm spending money on is food and a few supplements. I don't have very expensive uh, maintenance routine for this longevity. I, I might spend, I mean, Estonia is a bit cheaper than other places of the world. Uh, but uh, I might spend maybe 700 euros per month on all the supplements and all the foods, which is uh, like the average salary in Estonia. You could pretty much get away with very cheap uh, money and you can follow the same routine that uh, that I do, like uh, the supplement routine and the dietary routine. You don't need expensive food. You don't need expensive supplements. You just need to exercise a lot and lose weight. That's going to give you a lot of results and uh, some of, follow some other principles that I share in, all, in my uh, videos. But this is already a very long video. I think uh, you got a very good overview of the meta overview to my routine, my dietary practice, my exercise, etc. I will be doing more specific videos as well, like my actual foods and and uh, my training structure and how, how do I exercise and how do I eat in the future. But uh, this is uh, like a first of many in terms of the uh, meta overview to my routine. Check out my video about the supplements that I take that have had a positive effect on my longevity, but other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem, stay optimized, stay empowered.